the Lomography Instant Wide. Is it actually any good? Well, uh, let's talk about it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. A few years ago, and I mean a few, <laughs> I think four to be exact, originally a part of my very first ever Halloween special here on the channel, I reviewed the Instant Wide by Lomography. And I was watching it recently. I was pretty harsh on this thing and I actually really like it. So if you wanna see like a complete real world use of this going out shooting with it, I'll leave that video linked down below. Uh, it's a few years old and a few inches on the old beard. <laughs> but just to give you a little bit of a quick overview, what is this? Well, it's a Lomography camera that shoots Instax wide film. It's really cool. It's packed full of some great features and it provides a very unique look to your images. Just like all Lomography cameras, they lend their own look. It's almost like the Lomography look. <laughs> and honestly, I think it's pretty cool. This camera is packed full of features that are on no other wide camera except maybe the Mint RF70, which I've done a video on that too. I'm not really a fan. We'll hear the loudest camera ever made. A thousand dollars, baby, and that's what you get. But I'll leave that video in the description below as well. But this is packed full of great features and it won't really break the bank that much. It is a little bit on the more expensive side versus the Instax wide camera from Fuji, but this chunky monkey here uh, will bring you a price tag of $199. Yeah. But it comes packed with, like I said, a bunch of features and some accessories that I actually don't have, except for one of them. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, when you opened it, you would have come with a couple lens attachments, a close-up lens, I believe an ultra wide lens and a splitzer, which allows you to split the image however you want, top, sideways, and it's pretty fun. I've used it on the square version of Lomo's camera. Lomo Instant Square Glass. It's a mouthful. On all the Instax wide cameras from Fuji, you really don't get any options. You get options over your focus distance, which is just too <laughs> close up and far away. Minimal control over the flash. I know on my 200 camera, I get like auto flash, which it will fire sometimes and sometimes it won't, or the flash on all the time, you can't turn it off. You get lighten and darken via exposure compensation and that's pretty much it. But this guy right here is packed full of a lot of other features. You can turn the flash on and off. You've got double exposure mode. You've got plus one, minus one on exposure comp. And what's really cool is you have auto mode for your shutter, you have bulb mode and and fixed at 1 30th of a second. I believe you'd want to use that via the external flash sync on the camera because you can hook up a studio lights to this thing if you really want to, like a flash. It doesn't have a cold shoe mount though. That would be kind of cool to see, but it does have a tripod mount on the bottom and it has three options for your focus unlike Fuji's where there's only two. It has infinity, it has one to two meters, and then 0.6 meters. Really cool. To fine tune your focus distance a little bit better. It has a selfie mirror in the front, which is really accurate, surprisingly. It has a built-in flash, and it has a removable viewfinder. And this comes in handy if you're using some of the other lenses that this would have come with. I, I didn't get one with the lenses, unfortunately. But you can swap this in and out for the lens that's on here. This is the standard one for the 90 millimeter lens. The viewfinder is pretty far off though from the lens, so you do have to compensate quite a bit, <laughs> but they help you out inside the viewfinder. If you look through it, you will see a window to help you frame where you need to get your camera lined up. It runs off of AA batteries, which is really nice. No special batteries needed like CR2 batteries. And another cool thing is if the batteries go dead, you don't have to worry about what frame you're left off on. It has an analog film counter, which is really nice, really handy. Now, one of the other accessories that I do have that comes with it is a lens cap. Yeah, really cool. But the cool thing about this is it is a remote. Yes, instant button to take your shot, which is really cool. Fortunately, the batteries are dead in this. Actually, there's no battery in it. <laughs> I think it was dead and I took it out. So I need to get one of these. So I'm hitting the road soon uh, on a road trip. 
uh, down to Policon, baby! And I'm gonna be bringing this with me. So I wanna use that remote for some group shots. One of the things I complained about in the original initial review of this camera was when you put this on your, uh, <laughs> You do that, you accidentally press the button, and if you don't have the camera in the off position, it will take a photo. Uh, and I've wasted a lot of shots with this. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I forgot to take the cap off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's try that again. Forgetting to take it off. I've burned probably easily a full pack by now of forgetting this. This is the only camera that I have and the only camera on the market that has, you have to remove the lens cap for instant film. I was pretty critical of that uh, when I did that initial review, but if you're careful, it's not that big of a deal. But I think I've wasted a f at least a full pack of film, maybe even two. The neat thing with this is if you are taking like a selfie shot or distant shot, push the button and I'll take a photo. But what happens if you're behind the camera and you try to take a photo? Well, the sensor's in the front. They thought of that. There's a sensor in the back of the camera as well. They thought of everything. You can actually attach the cap to the camera itself. So you don't, ever, you don't have to worry about losing it, which is nice. But the remote also comes in handy if you are going to be doing bold mode, because you can press and hold the button and it will keep the shutter open. So if you want to do, I don't know, light streaks, light painting, uh, just night photography in general, it's really nice. Some of the negatives with it, I would say is uh, the size. This thing is a chunky monstrosity. <laughs> this thing is so big. Uh, it's thick with like 14 Cs. Uh, the other thing is I'm not a fan of the placement of the viewfinder. I would have loved to have seen the viewfinder off to the, I guess the left of the camera. So I could hold it up here, frame it, take a shot. It's on this side and the button is on the same side. So kind of have to like jam my face into the camera. Minor, minor complaints. Now, not everyone is a fan of the Lomography look. This definitely stands out from the rest, but I personally like it. And the pictures are pretty dang sharp for the lens being plastic. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't put glass in there. I mean, they did that with the square camera. I don't know why they wouldn't have done it with the wide. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I think it even comes with some flash gels too. I know the, the square version uh, does. I think this one does too. But I'll be taking this out and shooting another real world use with it coming up. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing. And if you want to pick one of these up, there's a link in the description below. Are you going to be getting one of these? Do you have one? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments below. Let's chat. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Now, get out there. Make some art.